A lot of E's in there. Say it again. I am the evolutionary expression of the eternal. And you are, each of you. Brene Brown offers another definition. Authenticity is the daily practice of letting go of who we think we are and we're supposed to be and embracing who we are. Even with all our little funny things we do. Do you do any funny things in your life that you kind of regret? <laughs> Oh, yeah. And like each symphony, each instrument in the symphony orchestra, I always love this image. Every part is needed to make the sound full. From the big bass drum to that tiny little piccolo. Every sound is vital. So each of you are vital, an essential part of this thing called life. No matter what you do or who you are or where you came from, you are important. The authentic self is sometimes referred to as our essential self, our higher self, our God self. And living authentically means operating from that place, that place of knowing the truth about who we are as part of the divine plan. So just imagine if you truly grasped and embodied the reality that you are love and expression, that's all you are. I am love and expression. Wow. How would your interactions unfold in your life? How would your life change? What would your life look like? I am love and expression, period. Let's affirm that one together. That's a little easy, easier to remember. I am love and expression. Uh, you're not convincing me. <laughs> I am love and expression. Now, you may not be able to claim that right now, but I guarantee if you would just say that over and over again daily, breathe it in, allow it to kind of percolate, something might shift in your consciousness. Something just might. It's not only important to understand what authentic authenticity is, but it's also important is how we get to the point where we live there more of the time than we don't. Right? I so often hear <clears throat> students that have studied the science of mind or have a really strong spiritual practice that they often say, oh, you know, I still fall back sometimes into my habits or this or that, but I notice it quicker and I get out of it faster. So we don't park our car there. We don't live in despair. We, we have the tools. We have the prayer. We have the affirmations. We have treatment. We have visioning. We have all those things that bring us back into our center. That's what's so important about practice, practice, practice. So we create, when we do that, we create what's called a quiet consistency. I like that image. When we say yes to understand, know, and embody who we truly are as spirit and expression, when we start to really pay attention to our thoughts, our self-talk especially, it will set us on a clear path. It has to. It's kind of like peeling away the layers of the onion. So it, it takes, it's a process. It's a process of paying attention. You remember the, 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 the fellow Wayne Dyer, who, who wrote many books, did many PBS specials, the late, great Wayne Dyer, he talked about keeping the link between ourselves and spirit clean. I like that visual. How's my link today? Is it rusty and corroded? Or is it strong and clear and clean? How's my link? I really like that. Because it, it, it opens us up to just pay attention again. Like, yeah, I'm a little corroded today. <laughs> My thinking is a little rusty. I had opportunity in Hawaii. I got really irritated at something when we were out to dinner. And I just kept getting more and more irritated. And I was watching myself get more and more irritated and just being quite surprised by that. So, it's, you know, it still happens. But then I was able to catch myself and... Again, catch it quicker. 
and make my link a little bit clearer to that divine spirit. Because it, it leads us into a much more satisfying life, I believe. And then you may say, oh, but I've done some really horrible things in my life. I've really screwed up. But remember the story in the Bible of the prodigal son. You remember that story? And prodigal means to live recklessly, basically, or it's being out there. So Ernest Holmes in the Science of My Textbook on page 147 has a really interesting thing about that. First of all, he says, daily we must control all thought that denies the real and affirm the divine presence within us. Again, that link. And then, as the mist disappears before the sun, so shall adversity melt before the shining radiance of our exalted thought. So as our thought goes higher, it dissolves the lesser. The prodigal son remained a prodigal, reckless, as long as he chose to do so. When he chose to, he did return to his father's house, and he was greeted with outstretched hands. So shall our experience be when we return to the world which is perfect. There will be something that turns to us. We shall behold a new heaven and a new earth, not in some far off place, but here and now. Act as though I am and I will be. The spirit of truth will lead us into all good. This is the high road to fulfillment of our lives. There is then, he says, no limitation outside of our own ignorance. And since we can all conceive of a greater good than we have so far experienced, we all have the ability to transcend previous experiences. Hear that. We all have the ability to transcend that. And to rise triumphantly above them. But we shall never triumph over them while we persist in going through the old mental reaction. Ain't it all. The old mental reactions. And we all, we all have them. We all do that. So stepping onto the path to cultivating authenticity <clears throat> is, again, not becoming something other than who we are, but also it involves releasing those thoughts, patterns, and attitudes that are barriers, that are those blocks, that that stand in our personal, stand in the way of our personal truth and power. So I'd like to lead you into a short process that I learned from Reverend Diane last Sunday in Kauai, and it fits in perfectly with my talk. So I invite you to have things off your lap. <clears throat> Because we're always impressing, this is one of the main basic metaphysical tenets, is that we're always impressing the laws of the universe with who we say we are, or who we think we are. And these laws of the universe absolutely do what we bring to the table. Cause and effect, mental equivalent, law of correspondence, it's all the same thing. So I invite you to, with your feet on the floor, if it's comfortable, I invite you to close your eyes, and I invite you to have your hands open in your lap, because we're going to do something with our hands. Hands open like you're ready to receive. And take a deep, cleansing breath. And we're going to be using our imagination. And the imagination is a, is a great the pearl of great price of the mind. So I invite you to imagine that in your left hand, that it is filled with all the good things in your life. All the good things about you. All the great things you've done. And you're going to do. Fill that left hand <clears throat> with all the appreciation that you have 
for your body, for your loved ones, for the beauty of nature in all its forms, for all the good in your life. Just fill that left hand. And now turn your focus to your right hand. And with your imagination, fill it with everything you're irritated about. All of your complaints. All the stuff you judge. Any resentment. Notice the difference of the feeling of your left hand and your right hand. And notice that they're not the same. They're not connected. They cannot be in the same place at the same time. So we get to choose whether we move through this life on this path with deep appreciation or with irritation and complaints. Which path will you choose? The energy we put out into the universe on our path is one or the other. So take a breath. You can open your eyes, relax your hands, shake them out if you'd like. <sighs> Interesting, huh? And we know this. We know we're always in choice. So I invite us today and every day to step onto our path with conscious awareness. of how we're showing up with courage, with faith, and with the expectancy of something greater today. I know for me, I stand up every morning and I open my arms and I say, today's going to be a great day. How can I serve today? God, show me something good. Or whatever you want to say, but it's really nice every morning to declare something for you to experience, that lifts you up, that rises you, raises you above whatever's going on. And always call us for prayer. We're here for you 24-7. Well, maybe not 24-7. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> so I want to um, read from the Science of Mind magazine uh, this month on being authentic, to close, <clears throat> and this is on page 30 of the Science of Mind magazine from, from Mary Davis, of how to bring practices into our life to help clear the path. And there are five of them. The first one is sacred silence. Your quiet moments are an invitation to spirit and a window to your true nature. Spiritual reading, meditation, visioning, prayer, walk in nature will weave your higher guidance into your daily life. And I know you all know all this anyway. Number two, journaling. And these are some really good prompts. What brings me joy? What do I really need today? Who am I when I'm not worried or overwhelmed? In what aspects of my life am I not being completely myself? These are great questions, great prompts to journal about. Number three, mindfulness. Slow down and observe life more deeply. Use this moment to relax your habitual thoughts.
Practice compassion for yourself as much as you practice compassion for others. Sometimes we forget about ourselves. Number four, relentless self-love. I like that. Relentless self-love. Not just occasional. <laughs> Embrace your perceived imperfections. Don't judge the way you grow and change. Release the negative self-talk. What you consider to be your weaknesses may be part of your greatest wisdom and the path to your purpose. That's wise. That's, that's using the stepping stone instead of the stumbling block when we feel weak. And the fifth one is inner wisdom. Remember, there's no competition. Thank God. Ever. You are the only one with your gifts. Know that you are a sacred being here with all the rest of us to share your love. You honor all other beings by becoming fully yourself, your fully authentic self. Yeah. So again, I invite us to step onto our path today with courage and faith, clarity and the expectancy of good. So let's take that into prayer. I'm going to share Ernest Holmes' prayer called, Before Me is a Clear Road and I Proceed. It's a perfect closing for this talk today. So I invite you to take these words for yourself. They're written in the first person. The forward look is the Godward look. Today I stand at the door of the abundant life and I knock. All that I seek opens to me and beckons me to life's fullness. I enter into my divine heritage, and I walk with the great and the true. There are no obstructions in my pathway of mind. The mistakes of yesterday are behind, and the future beckons with promise. God is where I am, and God will always be with me. His hand will never loose mine, nor will his love let me go. His listening mind tells me to fear not the forward pace. Thinking straight, I walk in peace. I walk in peace to my selective good. I am pushed from behind by spirit, and I am led forward by true guidance. I walk in faith. I have courage, for I know my divine self will never fail me. Ahead of me is the royal road to good living based on spirit and motivated by love. This is the day of progress. This is the day of demonstration. And I walk. I walk in the dream of accomplishment. And my dream becomes a fact. Right here. Right now. This is the truth. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Amen.